Here is our host, Tian Wei. Hello and welcome to World Insight with me, Tian Wei. The program is coming to you live from Beijing. The countdown fireworks and an Olympic torch relay all ignited the Beijing 2022 Winter Olympic Games opening ceremony. The event took place on Friday night at the National Stadium in Beijing, also known as the Bird's Nest, the same venue that kicked off the 2008 Summer Games 14 years ago. Beijing has become the first city to host both the Summer and the Winter Olympics. Around 2,900 athletes will compete in 109 events this February. The organizers have vowed to deliver simple, safe and splendid games for the world. And the opening ceremony performances showcase the passion of sports from the people in China and also the passion to host the games. The opening ceremony was divided into 15 segments, including the Parade of Nations and the lighting of the Olympic snowflake. Chinese President Xi Jinping attended the ceremony and declared the games open. And the International Olympic Committee President Thomas Bach expressed his gratitude towards China for making these Winter Games happen amid the pandemic. For more on the 2022 Beijing Winter Olympics, we are joined in the studio by Paul Dong, co-founder of the EI Asia. Also in Shanghai, Miguel Galacci, the former Undersecretary of Italian Ministry of Economic Development. It's wonderful to have both of you gentlemen joining us uh, right now. First of all, Happy Lunar New Year to both of you. And certainly this is a very special moment. Uh, the spring starts and the Winter Olympics for the 2022 start, Paul. Yeah, Li Chun, or uh, I would rather call it the advent to, to spring. Uh, it's not quite uh, really spring here. Yes, it's still very deep in winter, but on the lunar calendar, it's, it's indeed called uh, spring. And, uh, but more significantly, the, the opening ceremony. Tian Wei uh, just reminds me of 13 and a half years ago when we were together for the Beijing 2008 Summer Games opening ceremony. It reminds us so much, and we're so proud mm. that both the Bird's Nest as, a, as well as Beijing City yeah. can be the very first in the world, in the history of the Olympic Games, to ever witness, stage, and participate in both the Summer and Winter Games. For the past the decades, of course, uh, many in China have witnessed already and also experienced the excitement of uh, winter and summer Olympic games elsewhere in the world. But still this time, very excited. A lot of people have been expressing their passions online. Uh, and Miguel, you are in Shanghai and you were watching the opening ceremony as well. Tell me more about your thoughts. Uh, it was very, uh, like you mentioned, uh, uh, very, very good because uh, uh, we I, I was also at the opening ceremony in uh, Beijing in 2008, uh, and of course there are some differences, but the thing that I find in common, and this is really a little bit uh, general to the whole of China, uh, there's always the world together. Uh, this time was uh, Yi Xiang Wei Lai, so together for a shared future, and at the time in 2008 was uh, um, one world, one dream. So I think it is a part of the overall uh, spirit of both the Olympics and what China as a country, especially in this time of uh, mm. tensions and anxiety around the world, uh, to deliver the message of friendship and peace amongst the people of the world. And I think this is really the uh, main objective uh, of uh, these games, in addition, right. of course, uh, to, to the sports. And of course, there's a uniqueness of the Chinese culture. Earlier, we see in our footage uh, some photos of the opening ceremony. It was trying to depict about the lunar calendars in China, the 24 most important moments according to the calendar. And of course, the spring starts according to the lunar calendar. Look at that green. And there we go the Olympic Five Rings rises uh, with special effects and very much excitement among the crowd. And by the way, there is a huge crowd in the opening ceremony. People were there uh, in national dignitaries as well as uh, many uh, from around China coming to the national stadium. Uh, and these delegations, uh, 
you know, China delegation, those from the United States, Canada, Switzerland, uh, and also those coming from uh, countries that are not necessarily uh, has been celebrating long traditional winter sports, yet they still managed to send their delegates, big or small, to the 2022 Beijing Olympic Games. So that is the togetherness that we are talking about here, isn't it, Paul? Yes, exactly. And I also noticed that during the, uh, the gala performance, that uh, when we had all the plates demonstrating the, uh, the slogans of the Olympic spirit, uh, faster, higher, and stronger, and we have an even bigger or more conspicuous together mm. uh, right in front of the uh, television view that people that we, we are paying more attention to, to together now, of course, from Tokyo and to Beijing yeah. now. And this also demonstrated in the, the basic theme of uh, Zhang Yimou's directed uh, performance or spectacle, if you like, that uh, well, we uh, are the theme, main theme of this yeah. performance, and we means together. I remember very clearly, as long as the opening ceremony starts, people's attention is not going to be about politics, it's not going to be about high profile uh, dignitaries, uh, uh, always, it's going to be about the sports, it's going to be about the athletes. Uh, and Miguel, I know even though you're in China, you're also celebrating for your national team, for example, the team of Italy. Uh, uh, how do you see the prospect? Well, Italy has a very strong uh, tradition, for example, in alpine skiing, so we expect uh, some medals there. Uh, we also hosted the Winter Olympics a few uh, years back in uh, Turin. Yeah. And the tradition of skiing and uh, generally a winter sport is uh, very strong, including skating. And so we do expect also positive results on the sport front. And uh, you are right, Tian Wei, this is now where we shift from uh, politics uh, into uh, games. Uh, and it is also through these victories uh, and the game, and doesn't really matter in the spirit of Olympic who wins, uh, who loses. Because at the bottom of all these events mm. is young people who've been trained for years, for years or even longer, that just come here yeah. to enjoy uh, sports. Okay. And we do hope that peace comes from the bottom. What about Team China? I know, uh, Paul, that uh, China has been preparing for this for years and certainly participating in almost every category, every sport that is on the list for the 2022 Winter Olympic Games. China has already achieved that goal even before any competition begin. Uh, China promised to have at least one athlete to participate in all of the seven sports included in this Olympics and all of the 15 disciplines under those seven sports and China has already achieved that. And now China will try to achieve as much as possible in the 109 medal events, not in all of them, but there are many Chinese athletes in this. Mm. This has been achieved within a few years. This is remarkable and, uh, and amazing. Mm. And I think although the Chinese leadership and the government try to tone down expectations in medals this time around, uh, mm. uh, stressing that, uh, you know, safety uh, and simplicity uh, and, and everything else, uh, participation, involvement and together union, and not necessarily a lot of medals, but I think the the general public right. from the Chinese population will still have a lot Wh of which interest. Which category are you expectations? looking at? Which category? Uh, the discipline. Yeah, um, yeah. I think it's a learning process because most learning of these learning appeal for us, please for for everybody, including myself, because winter sports compared to those summer sports are still relatively so which, new. So which categories? Yeah, yeah we. Uh, I'm I'm interested in everything, including luge, skeleton. <laughs> and bobsleigh and also those biathlon events right. and a lot of skiing events instead of uh, skating because we are relatively more familiar with skating, figure skating or right. short track speed skating. Of course, it's going to be very competitive because uh, there are a lot of extraordinary athletes coming from all over the world participating. Uh, Miguel, what about you? Which categories are you looking at? I tell you, I'm looking at two maybe opposites. One is uh, uh, curling and the other one is uh, figure skating. Uh, maybe for two different reasons. Figure skating tends to be, let's say, a little bit more romantic. Mm. Uh, it brings memory back of fairy tales uh, uh, with the beautiful athletes dancing in, in, on ice. Uh, 
and curling uh, um, as, as an engineer it's mm. very technical because we see the the, the circles bounce the speed the, the, the frictions with the eyes uh, so for, for both for, for opposite reasons uh, I, yeah. I, I enjoy watching those two really the beauty of winter sports so once you experience it you will have a very deep impression and certainly be able to appreciate them much more Every winter sports has its tradition, and that is why uh, this time with China, Beijing hosting the 2022 uh, Winter Games, uh, about 300 million people are expected to be on the ice and snow, meaning they're going to do some kind of uh, winter sports, uh, me included, by the way. I also tried several of them. A little bit clumsy, but I managed to do that. I really wonder, you know, what does that mean for all of us? you know, uh, when it comes to winter sports, the IOC certainly, there we go, that's my photo on the snow. <laughs> and what does that mean though? I mean, when 300 million people from China on the snow, on the ice, uh, what does that mean for the winter sports, uh, Paul? Well, it means a tremendous, a dramatic change to the entire landscape of international winter sports. Mm. That's why the IOC has been so excited about this opportunity, working together with China, with Beijing, to uh, to finally have this delivered, yeah. uh, despite all the uh, challenges, including the pandemic. Because uh, what does 300 million mean? Currently, the world, before China joined the crowd, there are no more than 100 million people practicing winter sports in total in the entire world. And then with China promising 300 million more, even if uh, maybe half of them are less loyal and you need to try even harder to, to, to retain them and, and try to yeah. make them to, to be loyal and come back to the sports. But a hun several hundred million people will sound like crazy for the existing winter sports world. <laughs> well, we are almost wrapping up today's uh, uh, discussion about the Winter Olympic Games, but I really want to ask you, and you know, today compared to 2008, a lot of things are different. So what does that mean for China to host this game, the city of Beijing? What does that mean for the world to be able to get up close to a city in China and to the people in China, even though we have the challenge of the pandemic? Uh, Miguel. Well, I think this is really one of the key success metrics uh, to show that uh, the world can go back to normality. China is implementing some measures, some may be strict, some may be less strict to test how the world can look like uh, in the next uh, few months. And I know it will uh, be a successful because I know China is taking all that it needs to do to make sure that both athletes have uh, an enjoyable time within safety. The follow-up of this, uh, I, I, you know, I, as a, an Italian, remember the next Olympics will be in uh, Milan, in yes. Italy. So this is for us a very important. Uh, we're talking about the development of winter sports. We are also in Italy going to open up to tourism very soon. So we do hope that Chinese tourists, they learn to ski here in China, <laughs> they enjoy the games, they get excited, yeah. and hopefully we will have an exchange of people from Italy and China to uh, visit each other now that the world hopefully in the next few months will open up uh, again. So this is really the bet that we are trying to do. And Italy is of course open for Chinese skiers in our also beautiful Alps. Faster, higher, stronger, together. The slogan and the motto of the Olympic Games for this time is already giving us a lot of uh, encouraging spirit, shall we say it that way. Let's wish the games great success. Thank you so much, Mika Galachi, Paul Dong for joining us. All the best.